Inside the Outdoors, Sunrise Peak Houseboats, and the Kane County Office of Tourism presents Kane County, the greatest earth on show. The city of Kanab is the hub of a wheel whose spokes lead to some of Mother Nature's most spectacular handiwork. Zion National Park, the Grand Staircase National Monument, Bryce Canyon National Park, the North Rim of the Grand Canyon, and Lake Powell are all within easy reach of Kanab. Bryce Canyon National Park, found just over an hour north of Kanab, is one of the most unique of all the parks. Folks from around the world flock to see those distinctive hoodoos. Oh, the pinnacle, I mean, it's awesome. The, if, if you haven't been there, you just gotta go see it. It's uh, one of God's great creations that uh, is not anywhere else. A series of stunning natural amphitheaters, the best way to see Bryce is to take a surprisingly short hike to the bottom. One of the highlights is the Navajo Loop. It's a 1.2 mile uh, trail that goes right down into the bottom of the Hoodoo, so you can really see the, the vast of them, you know, the, the, how high they are. You get down in and it comes right back up. Thor's Hammer is one of the major um, players with the Bryce Canyon. It's on all your postcards, all your books. One way to enjoy the incredible views at Bryce Canyon is with Kanab based National Park Tours. Our signature tour. We go to Zion uh, National Park, Bryce Canyon National Park, Lake Powell, Glen Canyon National Recreation Area, and then the North Rim of the Grand Canyon. It includes their hotel, all their meals, um, activities within each of the national parks, such as a mule ride, uh, ATV ride in Bryce, in Bryce Canyon, um, their guide, their park entrance fee. Basically, they show up in Kanab, Utah, and we do the rest. And that's why we've put our tours together like we did is so you can stay here. You don't have to hotel transfer and pack up your luggage. We can go spend the whole day, come back all day, you know, in each area. And it's a great opportunity to make it a destination for you. All of our guides are local guides who are from here. They know this country it's like the back of their hand. And, and that gives you such an advantage. Local knowledge comes in handy. So if you look right up here, that's what I was talking about earlier is all that's going to start you know, all that sand will start washing away and you can see some of the hoodoo starting to appear up there. Tyler Cornell's crew can show off lesser known natural wonders, like Red Canyon. So up here we have the salt and pepper shakers and if you look onto the left, you can see a really gray la red layer of rock. And so you can see the gray layer all the way across and it leaves these, you know, towering hoodoos up here. National Park Tours is the only local outfitter licensed to give tours of all the area parks. Each of the national parks offers such a variety of beauty that I couldn't just choose one favorite. It's like, you know, your favorite chocolate in the box, you know. They all offer something so wonderful. The best part for these guides is sharing this amazing beauty with visitors and seeing their reactions. Wow, I think that's the one word I hear probably majority of the time. Um, but just the uniqueness of, of Bryce, that unique word is I think the one thing that sets it apart from everybody else is how unique Bryce is and how different it is than everything else. Breathtaking, we've had people into tears, into you know uh, joy, saying we've had, we've had clients come that have seen places all over the world and they say this is the most vast and beautiful that they've seen in, in a four day period. So I think it's more unique than anything they've ever seen. I've seen, you know, people have been to the pyramids, they've been everywhere and, and this is, you know, they're like, wow, this is something I've never seen. Zion National Park is perhaps the most visited of Utah's national parks, and located just at the edge of this world-famous piece of real estate is perhaps the state's most unique resort. Zion Ponderosa Ranch and Resort sports a setting unlike any other. We're located right on the east rim of Zion National Park, and we often talk to people and tell people we're Zion Ponderosa Ranch Resort is where Zion National Park touches the sky. We're on top looking down and there's so many access trails out to Observation Point, Cable Mountain, 
Weeping Rock, all the different trails that we have. There's over 4,000 acres. You can get lost in the environment so quick and have just a tremendous experience from wild turkeys running, deer, elk. Just, it's, it's, it's special. It's a special plateau experience that people come from all over the world. The splendor of the setting at Zion Ponderosa is matched only by the variety of things to do. Whether you stay in one of the cabins or the luxurious homes for rent on the ranch, your biggest challenge will be where to spend your day. Do you lounge by the pool? <laughs> or partake in the more than a dozen ways to get the adrenaline pumping? There's so many things to do, from paintball games, ATV riding, horses, zip line, climbing walls, skeet shooting, jeep tours, bungee trampoline, mini ATVs for children, kids camp. We specialize in the outdoor experience and the love of the land that we're on. This may be about the only thing Zion Ponderosa Ranch doesn't have. Surfing in the desert may seem a bit strange, but think of it as snowboarding without having to bundle up. And at Coral Pink Sand Dunes, the sport is literally taking off. You know, the sand here is so fine and so soft that it seems to be one of the favorites, even the guy that developed them. This is one of his favorite places in the world to come. The dunes are so many different variations of sizes of dunes for somebody that wants a little beginner heel to somebody that wants to go, you know, something crazy. There's everything you need here. It's probably best to start with the generic board, although they do come in high performance models. But carving turns in sand is not something that comes naturally to most of us. Gilchrist has a few tips for the beginner. It's just to bend your knees. It's kind of like skiing or snowboard, anything like that. You gotta have a little bit of cushion in your knees and use that for the, the suspension. Once you do that, I don't know, it's just learning balance. Easier said than done. But there are worse places to be while trying to pick up a new sport. When Inside the Outdoors, Kane County continues, writings and ride. While Bryce and Zion Canyons get many more visitors, there are a number of adventures to be found in the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument. Just northeast of Kanab, you can find the Hog Canyon Trail System, a dream come true for ATV and UTV riders. Well, we have a lot of diverse trails. We have easy trails, which is following roads and stuff, a lot of sand. Uh, we have moderate trails that are moderate, you know, the people that have been experienced. Then we have some pretty tough trails around here, too. So we have a pretty diverse trail system in this area. Kanab is so ATV friendly, you can ride your vehicle right through town, on your way to the trailhead. Uh, anywhere in Kanab you can ride on an ATV, it's, it's legal. And we have roads that go both ways, so you can ride two trail systems out of Kanab on your ATVs. The locals are proud of these trails, and they want to share, just not with everybody. We love it down here, we love to show it to people, but like you said, <laughs> Then it gets too busy down here. <laughs> Most days when we go riding, you never see anybody else. It's just, there's so much to see and so many places to go that you don't get the congestion like you do, like maybe at Moab and places like that. Wide open trails for miles. More folks than ever are experiencing Kane County on an ATV. It used to be there was just maybe 20 or 30 people around in Kanab that rode now there's probably 200. Uh, people in every weekend, every weekend come to Kanab to ride. Motels have them in there. If you go through the motels in Kanab, you'll see ATVs, parking trailers, and in the back of trucks and everything.
how would you summarize what kind of riding you can do in Canab? Uh, I'd say a lot of good sand riding. It's not rocky. Uh, it's easy on you. you. Go out and ride you know, 50, 60 miles, and you're not beat up like some places you go. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of things to see, Indian stuff, arches, just a lot of neat things to see, old ranches and stuff like that. You know, that's the that's a way I like to ride, is to go to a destination. Another feature of the Grand Staircase Monument, if you know where to find it, is evidence of ancient life. Yeah, this is date back uh, about about 2,000 years. A simple tour of an Anasazi alcove turns up gems, like this corn from hundreds of years ago. If you take a, a closer look at it, you see it's very small, and uh, it's, it's a prehistoric variety. The ground here is just littered with ancient artifacts. So that's an example of corrugated uh, pot. Yeah, yeah, there are coils that were uh, spiraled and then pressed together uh, just like you used to do in, in, uh, in grade school. <laughs> Going with an archaeologist puts an academic spin on looking at the area's rock art. The concentric circles, uh, the reason you can say it's not graffiti is that uh, we find certain uh, icons, symbols, uh, distributed all over the area. You probably won't see anything like that over in the Four Corners area. Piecing together what life was like hundreds and perhaps thousands of years ago is always a challenge. But there are some who continue to keep asking the questions. I guess that's the story of archaeology is that it is a, a finite resource, but our ability to answer questions and our ability to formulate questions constantly changes. So it's something we'll be able to continue to do for a long time. From ancient times all the way to 1924, when Tom Mix led a Hollywood invasion of Kane County, more than 200 movies have been filmed in the area. That Old West heritage is remembered every year with Kanab's Western Legends celebration. It's lots of fun, it's a great, we have people come from all over the world. This year's Western Legends runs from August 22nd through the 24th, and organizers hope to once again bring a crowd to Kanab. When the studios would come from LA and see this scenery out here and the, the hills, and they just fell in love with it. And to this day, when these little, everybody wants to come back. This is our 15th year, and we're way excited. Each year it just gets better. When Inside the Outdoors continues, Lake Powell, Kane County, Utah. This Inside the Outdoors special edition is being brought to you by Moab, where adventure begins, by the Kane County Office of Tourism, by San Pete County, expand your soul, and by Sevier County, the center of it all. Might be some right up there into the sunlight. There's no one who knows more about catching fish on Lake Powell than fisheries chief Wayne Gustavison. Whether it's casting to striper boils, snatching smallmouth, largemouth, or walleye off rock piles with a jig or crankbait, this man who's called the lake home for nearly 40 years is without peer. So when you want to know how to fish the lake, and get a status update on its overall health, he's the man to see. We are at a, just over the uh, hump in a boom cycle. So we have probably double the population that we need for this lake right now. Many fish are easy to catch and we have good numbers of largemouth, smallmouth, walleye, striped bass, catfish, and bluegill. And so people can go out and catch all the fish they want. In fact, we want them to catch those because there's too many of some fish, particularly striped bass, smallmouth, and walleye. So catch all of those you want, keep them, enjoy them, they're really good to eat, and take a few home with you. And it's the best thing for the resource because we're downsizing the population, and when the uh, lake goes back up and we have more uh, habitat, then there'll be more room for the, the fish that are left to uh, carry out their life cycle in a, in a good fashion. So we're at a good point, but we're going downhill right now with habitat but the fishing is excellent. Lake Powell is probably uh, as good as it's ever been right now. 
numbers of fish caught per day are incredible. We've been out for a couple hours, caught 30 or 40 fish without trying very hard. It's, it's the norm now. It's, it's not what just pe lucky people do on a, on a lucky day, but right now you can easily go out and catch 30 if you're working on smallmouth and largemouth, but 100 plus if you're gonna watch stripers and walleye too. For the next decade, the uh, striped bass population is going to continue to be cyclical, but lots of fish to catch year after year. You can always count on stripers. Some years they'll be boiling, some years you'll be able to catch them on bait, but there'll always be some there. Smallmouth are gonna be there. They spawn on rocks, they use rocks as habitat, so they will be strong and prolific for the next decade for sure. Largemouth bass and crappie need brush for the young to survive. Their populations are going to plummet until the lake goes down, creates more brush, and covers up that brush again, and then the largemouth and crappie can come back. With all due respect to the land-based accommodations surrounding Lake Powell, there's only one way to really experience the lake, and that's from a houseboat. With nearly 2,000 miles of shoreline, about the same as the Pacific coast, Powell is unmatched when it comes to beaches and canyons, and today's houseboating is not what it used to be. Houseboats have evolved to the point where, you know, instead of a working vacation, which is what you used to have, the creature comforts that you have on a houseboat now with the, uh, the cooling systems and the, uh, the unlimited fresh water, we've got uh, filtrated uh, water now, and uh, it allows you to have a, a real vacation. Before, it was, it was hard work, especially for the guy who was really in charge of the vacation. He never got a break. <laughs> Now the vacations are, really feel like a vacation. You come to a beautiful marina, your boat has got all the creature comforts of home, and, and you can really enjoy yourself. Whereas before, you just really had to put a lot of work into the trip. With everything from ice makers to dishwashers, satellite TV and air conditioning, you'll never know you've left home, except for the view. And there's no better way to break the kids of that video game habit. Although, when you've worn them out in the sun, you can even grant them a bit of an electronic reprieve if you're feeling a bit guilty about forcing all that healthy fun on them. You've got the sun beating down on you and you've got little kids and then you have a place after the, the day of just recreating that you can take them inside to a, a fully air conditioned cabin and you can spread out, you can watch a movie, you, you, you have all the, uh, the comforts that you have in your own home. Today's houseboat looks more like something from a James Bond movie than a camper atop a set of pontoons from 30 years ago. And the change means even the most difficult to please Powell visitor of any age will feel right at home. We've evolved to the point where we get a lot of people that they want to take a family vacation and then they want to take an adult vacation maybe later in the season, maybe not as many people on that trip. And uh, you know, just some relaxing time on the, uh, on the lake and some people don't even leave the marina. The boats are so nice that it's just kind of like a condo on the lake that you can use for three days, four days, something like that and really have a good time from TVs that fold out from the ceiling to party salons fit for any gathering, today's Powell houseboater can live like the rich and famous. To see the lake up close and personal, there's no substitute for a high-powered cruiser. Joe Sams should know, he captains one of Antelope Point Marina's charter tour boats on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah, we've got a 27-foot sleek. Um, with a uh, big old big block engine in it and we do about 50 miles an hour so we can get up lake pretty quick and get you to places uh, before you know if like for instance Rainbow Bridge we can get up there before the tour boat uh, gets up there and, and get you in and out before the huge group of people gets up there so it's pretty nice. With Sam's local knowledge you get a different perspective on the giant lake. Even if you're a Lake Powell veteran chances are you'll still not be as familiar with all the special spots as someone who spends more than 300 days a year exploring its hidden places.
This is not your regular Lake Powell trip. Antelope Point Marina is in the extra service business. What we normally offer is a rainbow bridge tour, but uh, beyond that, I love going into slot canyons and uh, getting into narrow places that, that you wouldn't think a normal person would try to stick a boat like this, but uh, we get in there and, uh, and you see some really awesome sights. The tour we do is, uh, is actually a charter trip, so uh, if you wanted to add an extra hour or two or, or shorten it up even, uh, we have the capability of doing that, um, so it's very flexible. There are slot canyon hikes right off the water, a great way to get a feel for how the area looked before the waters of the Colorado were backed up. And after an hour or so of braving the desert heat, You'll be glad for a shady canyon wall or alcove, or a dip in the clear blue-green water. When we come back, riding the mighty Colorado. Think of Rapids, the Colorado River through Grand Canyon is perhaps the granddaddy of them all. Badger Creek, House Rock, Lava Falls, they read like a who's who of American whitewater. It's what draws thrill seekers by the thousands to the canyon. Kane County is the jumping off point for Grand Canyon exploration. It's the gateway to run.